Good evening, class. Welcome to Children's Sign, our children's Sunday school series. We're we're actually starting a new topic series. We've just spent the last eight weeks talking about communities and all the various parts of them. This week, we're going to start a series that I kind of am calling the For God series. We're going to learn about a lot of different things that we can do or that are for God. So, um... Again, for everybody, these lessons are designed for all kindergarten through fourth graders. So if you're in that range, hi, hello, how are you? I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. If not, you get the same introduction because I encourage everybody to join in. The Word of God can reach us all, whether we're 5 or 85. Today's lesson is called A Tent for God, and it is found in Exodus 25, 25, 1 through 31, and 35, 4 through 4 through 4038. It's a lot, a lot of scripture we're going to cover today. Let me introduce today's story for you. God told Moses to have the Israelites build a special place of worship to use in the desert. Now everybody gathered the materials and gifts like gold and silver for the tent. And this was a big project because God gave them a lot of detailed directions for every part of the temple or of the tent. Excuse me. Everybody had a special job to do, and they all followed God's directions exactly. The place of worship was called the tabernacle. It was put together like a tent to make it easy to take down when they were traveling and put up when they stayed in one place for a while. So speaking of the tabernacle, this is what we're going to put together in today's activity. Um, the tabernacle was the Israelites' special place of worship and they could worship God in the desert with it. We're going to finish drawing the missing missing pieces of the tabernacle. And then I want you to color it. Color it till your heart's content. All different colors. And if you want, and if you're in parents, if you can, post it on Facebook. Tag us at the church. Tag us, the church itself. I would love to see it. So let's complete today's activity. Now, for those that missed it, there was a post that goes live on our Facebook page at 10 a.m. every Monday. So that way you can see all the activities needed for today's lesson. Um, make sure to print those out so you can follow along with today's lesson. And you are more than welcome to pause the video and have you or have your child work on this themselves. You can continue along. I'm going to work on it so we can do it together. It's completely up to you. So are you ready? Let's do this. As always, we have to get our handy dandy pen. And let's start drawing. So first thing I'm going to do is connect the fence here. Connect it as... Now, I am not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. And if you ask any of my youth, they would say the same thing. So, and again, the reason I'm not coloring it is I don't have a good setup to color it um, that I could show you online. So, we will fill this in as well. See, for me, I got to do the long lines first. The, whoa, 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 whoa. I got to do the squares first, and then I can fill in the rest. Those look like they're the same size, I think. Let's see, I, there's a square here on, I believe that's the chest itself that we talked about uh, last week. And then, you just pull that across, pull that across. Sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing it. It's so tiny for me. And then it just comes down, 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 and... Well, I could say with uh, the utmost honesty that my art skills aren't that good. But I know yours are, so continue filling in all the gaps of this picture. Color it again. Post it on Facebook with the hashtag... Oh, let's see. I don't come up with these ahead of time like I should. Uh, post it with the hashtag children's children's time art 
So then it'll be right here in the lower thirds. So post it with that. Let's see what we can do. So, but t for now, let's move on to today's Bible story. Uh, find Exodus 25, 1 through 31 and 35, 4 through 40, 38 in your Bible. Or you can read the story, A House for God from the Deep Blue Bible Storybook. Uh, that is found on pages 84 to 86. Never fear, though. It's on the screen in front of us. So we can read it together if you don't have it. But here we go. Once again, Moses went up to the mountain, up the mountain to talk to God. Moses said, God, I want the people to build a special place to worship me. Everyone has a special, had a special job to do. Some of the people were builders. They made beautiful chests and tables out of wood. Then they covered the wood with gold. Some people, some of the people could sew. They made curtains out of purple and blue cloth. Some people made special clothing for the priests to wear. God told them to make a special gold box called the Sacred Chest or the Ark of the Covenant. They put special rules in, called the Ten Commandments inside the box. People also brought gifts to use in building the special place to worship God. Some people brought gold and silver. The gold and silver was used to make beautiful things for the place of worship. Some people brought sweet-smelling spices. The spices would be used to make the place of worship smell good. The place of worship was called the tabernacle. It was like a very large tent. Every time the people moved to a new place, they took the tabernacle with them. The place of worship reminded, reminded the people that God was with them. So let's talk about this a little bit more. What kind of things were used to build God's house? So there were special builders. They made chests and tables out of wood. So they used wood. They covered the wood with gold. So there's wood and gold uh, to make God's house too. For the curtains, they used purple and blue cloth. What was placed inside the home? In the hot inside the house. You know what I mean. You know, we talked about the curtains. There was the Ark of the Covenant, which had all the Ten Commandments. Uh, they brought gold and silver to uh, just make it beautiful. They brought spices, sweet-smelling spices, so it could smell good. You know, it was good for them to build it out like that. So let's actually watch today's story, uh, where we're going to find the Deep Blue Kids having a Sunday school in the sanctuary. So let's go see how their Sunday school lesson's going. We'll come back. We'll talk some more. See you in a minute. Are going to have Sunday school in our beautiful sanctuary because I want to talk to you about symbols. What do you see in our sanctuary that reminds you of God? Yes, Victor? The stained glass windows. That's awesome. What other symbols remind you of God? What about candles? Yes, we light candles to remind us that God is here. Can anyone tell me one more symbol? What about the cross? Very good! You'll find a cross somewhere in just about every church. I know a symbol. Hi, Pastor Kim. Hi, Pastor Kim. Hi, Miss Molly. Hello, kids. Something that reminds me of God is the Bible. And I was coming to get mine. God gave important instructions on symbols when Moses was building the tabernacle, which was a temple where the Lord dwelled. The Lord told Moses to collect gold, silver, copper, nice cloth, yarn, animal skins, and gems for the tabernacle. Why did the Lord want them to bring all those things? Moses got instructions about how the tabernacle was to be built, even down to what size everything needed to be inside and outside the tabernacle. Who is going to build the Lord's tabernacle? The Lord chose two people to lead the work. They made beautiful curtains for the tabernacle and five pillars for the front. A covering made from ram skin was dyed red and used for the top of the tabernacle. Wooden posts and curtains surrounded the tabernacle. 
This was the outer wall. In the courtyard, there was a square altar made of copper with wooden posts on each side so it could be carried. The Lord told them to put a bronze bowl between the altar and the tabernacle so the priests could wash before going in the tabernacle. Inside the tabernacle, there was a lampstand on one side, and on the other side was a table. Toward the back of the tabernacle near the pillars was an incense altar. Behind this veil was the Holy of Holies, and that is where the chest that held the covenant was kept. The high priests wore special clothes. On their chest, they wore 12 different stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. The Israelites had symbols that reminded them of God's presence, just like we do. Pastor Kim, can people in the church be a symbol? Yes, they can, Edgar. Symbols remind us of something, and we can remind people of God's love when we show each other kindness and love. I want to show God's love everywhere I go. Me too. What reminds you of God? So what kind of symbols are in your church and in your sanctuary that remind you of God? So for us, we have the cross. We have our cross that, you know, that reminds us of God, of Jesus and what he did. Um, let me think. Do we really? We have a couple pictures of Jesus hanging around the building. I actually have one in my office. Let's see if I can do this easily. <laughs> You can see him way there. <laughs> so we do have pictures of Jesus. We have a lot of Bibles, you know, that reminds us of God's Word. You know, we have the communion plates that, you know, remind us of the Last Supper, what Jesus did. And I think, and that's all at least I'm quickly thinking of. I know there's probably more, but I, I, I can't think this early in the morning. So... But those are, I mean, and tell me, what kind of symbols are in your church and in your sanctuary that remind you of God? And this actually leads us to our sacred conversation for today. If you could build a house for God, what would it look like? For me, I, I would like to, so, so it's funny, at the same time I'm recording this, I have my web browser open to Facebook, and, uh, I'm watching our Facebook or Minecraft live stream from this past Friday. And uh, so I think about it in Minecraft terms. I think this big, like, multi layered gold mansion where we had, well, kind of like the tabernacle. We had this one room that had the chest in it filled with all the Ten Commandments and any other special rules. You know, I can see. What would be cool, too, is like this big emerald room for worship that has all kind of pews and a big stage. Um, I don't know. That's just the first couple of things that come to mind. You tell me, too, if you could build a house for God, what would, what would it look like to you? And actually, what would be cooler is if you could draw a picture of it. And then, like we did with the first picture with the tabernacle, color it, post it online, with the hashtag children's time art again it's at the bottom of the screen and let me see it i would love to see your designs and if you do it on minecraft to send me the video you can still tag us and i would love to see that that'd be fun so and this my friends leads us to our blessing and prayer for today now before we end today we're going to share a blessing with each other like we always do Blessings are just to show you how special you are to God. So we're going to say this blessing together. You ready? On the count of three. So one, two, three. God loves you. God remembers you. And God will always and always be with you. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for showing us how to make special places to worship you. May we always know you guide us and are always with us. Amen. So before we go, I actually have an at, uh, uh, your homework. We'll call it that. No, I don't want to call it that. Your at-home activity. Um, part of the activities post that was on our Facebook page earlier has the high priest paper doll craft. 
So here's an activity that you can do as a family at home, and here are your instructions. So have your mom or dad make a copy of the high priest on either cardstock or paper. Cardstock would be easier, but paper would work just as well for everybody that wants to participate. Give everybody a copy of the paper doll, let everybody color it, and then cut them out. Invite everybody to dress the high priest and interact with the figures. Um, and after everybody is done, ask the question, what do you think it would have been like to be a high priest? Um, so you see there's a new hat. I think that's a chest plate. Uh, there's another robe you can put on them. There's a lot of different things you could do. So interact with that. Have fun with that. That's my main question. Have fun with that. And um, that wraps us up. So let me go through. Actually, I don't have all that many announcements for you. So let me, um, I guess let me just wish you a good day. Um, I will say too, there will be probably a special, there's this big project I've been working on, very anxious to announce it and get it out to you guys. You should see an announcement for it tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, but there will be some changes and I'll explain all of those changes in the update video that'll come out with the announcement and all that. But um, get ready. <laughs> I'll say this, this is gonna be a big project, big series, big production stuff. A lot of fun, a lot of fun stuff coming up. So I uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. And uh, there won't be any Friday fun video this week um, with this big project and the, poten the potential of me starting on it this week. Uh, I just need some extra time to work on it, so I hope you understand. And um, like I said, just get ready for this project. I'm excited for it. So until then, and until you hear from me again, uh, stay safe, stay sane, enjoy the rest of your summer. We're in August already. That means we only got at least a month, you know, if that, before you might have to go back to school in some way, shape, or form. So... Enjoy what you can. Go back and watch one of the other videos I've done. So, as always, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next one.